anybody who's tuned in, despite my clear instructions not to. I see you there, whoever you are. There's exactly one person there who is not who is not me. Um, that's fine. Welcome. So this is this is Skull Monkeys. This is um, the sequel to the '90s adventure game, The Neverhood, which inexplicably is not another not inexplicably but but unexpectedly counterintuitively is not an adventure game uh but uh, but a platform it's got these sort of gorgeous visuals which are uh rather compressed and ps1 looking uh likewise the sound it's actually really funny when you when you hear the audio quality on the soundtrack it sounds a lot worse <laughs> than the previous game because it had to be sort of compressed and i assume the uh, old masters were sort of irrecoverably lost. Um, yeah, it's a great game. One of my one of my old favorites, actually. Um, I enjoyed it a whole lot as a kid. When we do this stream properly, I'll probably repeat this story. But my, my, I rented this from Blockbuster, and my dad was a bit horrified that the sequel to this kind of cerebral, puzzly. Uh, literary game that I had played was what my my mom was more horrified than my dad. It was though it was hop and bop, perish the thought. Um, but yeah, it's it's a very it's charming uh, in its own right, and uh, it does directly continue the story of of Neverhood, OG Neverhood. Um, concludes it, in fact, and it's just kind of bursting with weird nonsense creativity and. You know, a lot of it is pretty childish. There's farts in it and stuff. But, uh, but uh, it's just... I don't know. It's the kind, of, the kind of game you didn't see as much. Which is weird to say, because it's like a you know, mascotty platformer, uh, which you saw a lot of in, in those days. But there was just something uh, artisanal and small batch and weird and dark but playful about it. There's some, some series of that era were like that. Um... The Oddworld franchise has, of course, survived and been remade and all that stuff. Uh, this, you know, <laughs> represents a little bit of a dead end. Um, they tried to do a spiritual successor to the Neverhood specifically, and they kickstarted it. It was called Armicrog. Um, wasn't that great, in my humble opinion. Um, but obviously, you know, there are other video games that use clay figures and stuff like that. I wrote about Moon not too long ago, which is from a similar era. There's obviously modern indies like Jack King Spooner and stuff like this. Um, but this was pretty out there at the time by my lights. Looks like this is working. Yeah, like I said um, in part one of the Do Not Watch This stream, um, we're going to be focusing on games that you currently can't commercially access. Um, stuff that was sort of never re-released. This was never, you know, they never re-released this for the PS3, to my knowledge, or at least not in, the, in North America. Um, trying to get the N64 working, which uh, would allow for some additional games that are in a similar uh, category of, of inaccessibility or intellectual property limbo, uh, like the Gambare Goemon games for N64, um, which were never released on any of the virtual consoles for the stupidest possible reason. Um, it was because they used the N64 controller pack, that little memory card thing that went in the back of the controller, and none of the games that used that, like I guess Nintendo never figured out or cared to figure out how to emulate that, so none of those games came out. Um... This, I think, it was just because it's a bit of it's, it was a bit lost to history. It's got a really interesting aesthetic to it, um, and again, like a lot of this stuff is, is to a certain degree bog standard, the platforming, the collectathon elements, but it's got this kind of wild energy to it. Um, a little aesthetic flourish that I think has been used to great effect in other stuff since is that uh, every section, oops, every section of the uh, the level, the arrangement of the music. Uh, increases. You end up with just usually like a beat, maybe a simple melody, and you end up with this kind of lush, orchestrated uh, thing. You got that little guitar and accordion thing going on, a little like creepy choir. Uh, all the levels do that. They kind of build up the music slowly, which was a really cool idea.
present ball. Yeah, I mean, you know, clay ball is basically just coins. Again, like that <laughs> platform, it's, it's hard to understand if you weren't around or if you haven't plumbed the depths of old games just how much platfo platformers were the default. Um, like, I guess almost in the way that, like, mobile gacha games are now. Like, if you had a buck to make, you made a platform. Which makes sense, of course. Like, the post crash, the history of video games sort of begins with Super Mario Brothers, so, you know, it's, it's deep in. Deep in uh, the DNA of, of games pre 3D, certainly, you know, and, and post 3D, but you know, especially before the game, before there was a, another main way games could work, or feel, or play, or be, really. And to be clear, we're already past the point where, where Doom exists <laughs> and, and shooters are happening, uh, but uh, there were still a hell of a lot of platformers at this point. Come to think of it, most of the games I'm thinking about lining up are platformers of one kind or another, but they're all quirky or strange in one way or another. Um, thinking about the Gambare Goemon games, as I said, thinking about uh, Mischief Makers, because I got the three items I can get from this bonus room, by the way, which has a lovely bonus room song, which I might just shut up and uh, let you enjoy real quick. Here's you who may be watching this later. Yes, here's a little bonus you can play. Don't be frightened, don't run away. You can linger, because I'm a little your friend. Think of me as a father figure Word. with a hand to lend. Here's a little bonus room where you don't have to worry. Take your sweet time, you need not hurry. Oh, you're looking incredible. You're the bomb. And me, I'm kind of like your dad. And a little like your mom. There are no monsters here. Hey, wait, look over there. I was just kidding. Don't be scared. When you turn this game off in the real world once again, you won't have to play to make me leave or try to pretend. Cause I'll be right there when you open your hand. Cause I'm a little invisible musical friend. So show me to your pets or show me This to goes on. Your Some of these bonus rooms are longer. Really we're almost done. <laughs> Show them you're individual. Show them you are bold. Besides, I get residuals for every game that's sold. I'm your little invisible musical friend. So that's something we can all enjoy. Oh, yeah, there's a password system in this. There's no saves. So that lets me start here with uh, with uh, my inventory and, and whatnot. It's funny, when I plugged this into this, I said this was the game I was playing on Twitch, it tagged it like platformer and horror, and I guess, yeah, kind of. This is pretty spooky. It's horrible. Monster. But we're going to solve the problem with farts, as previously mentioned. 
So ridiculously, that was a skill unlock. We can now uh, create a, a fart clone of ourselves, uh, which can adventure and take a hit in our stead. Yeah, there you go. Word. We also have homing birds, which do not get an intro cutscene. Quite oh, useful. Yeah, there's one. Well, pass that up. Three of those 1970s is going to get like a mega bonus level. Oops, I died. Well, let's call this a one death run. Thanks for tuning in, Mysterious Stranger. Um, tune in for real when we do this for real, maybe. Have a good night.